to show you how to make a, a key, how to cut your own keys or duplicate your own keys using a hand cutter here. It's called the Lishi Cutting Tool or Lishi Cutter. And what this does is instead of using a thousand dollar machine, sorry, you can actually use this to cut your keys on the spot. This might hand, uh, be handy for a locksmith that doesn't have electricity in their van and um, they can cut an emergency key out in the field in the dark. It's small, it's, it's you know, it's handheld, doesn't take any room, and it's uh, way, way, way less more expensive than a key machine. So today I just wanted to kind of show you. So based on the last video, uh, we keyed, we learned how to key this lock. Um, the bidding on it, or the code, was 34477. So if you remember also in that last video, I showed you how to re-key this lock without having the working key or how to get into it and how to decode it so we can, you know, find the code so we can have the key cut. Uh, this video kind of supplements that one because it's going to show us in the event you don't have a key and you need to make a working key, um, we can create the missing key. So... We're going to use some 3D printed um, key guides here. These will give us the correct depth in the spaces that we need. Uh, this is a number five. So remember, what we want to do is get the key code or use the pin um, information. In the last video, I showed you how to get that. So this code is 34477. Or in other words, the pinning method is pins three, four, four, seven, seven. All right, so that's the that's what we're gonna make today. We're gonna use three, four, four, seven, seven, and we're going to create a key, a missing key for this lock. So as you can see, this tells us the number. So what we're looking for is three, four, and a seven. All right, so the, this is a five. We don't need that. This is a, a nine. And remember, this is a Schlage that we're working on, an SC1 key. This is a four, so we're gonna need three. So that's four. That. Here's a two, don't need that one. Put that one aside. And that's a one, don't need that. Put that aside. That's a nine. Wait, no, I'm sorry, that's a zero. We don't need that one. It's an eight. We don't need that. There's a three, so that'll be the first one in the code. So three and a four. And then we're looking for a seven. Of course, it's the last one. This is a six. And this is the seven this little tray aside, put these guys away. So here is how it's gonna work. Three, four, four. Seven, seven. Okay. So how these work is you slide the key blank into this plastic 3D printed container and you're gonna see the series of numbers here so let me see if I can get that a little better you're gonna see one two three four five this means that this has five pins or five cuts and that tells you the space where you know where you're gonna want to cut that so this is a number three this is code number three so our key code again three four four seven seven it's going to be three is in the one position, right? So the first code is three. So I'm gonna put that in properly. You wanna make sure that you place it in all the way as far as it'll go. Just kind of flip it around here like this. And I'm gonna take these key cutters, these leashy cutters, this aside, and we're gonna cut out as best as we can. We're gonna cut in the one position here, so. 
go ahead and just kind of chop that down and just kind of cut around it, make sure that I cut it properly. All right, so just kind of go through it. So, okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but see, that's a three. The next is four in our code. So three, four, four, seven, seven. I have two fours, so we're gonna use it twice in the two position and the three position. So again, I'm gonna insert the key into this tool like this. Flip it around, make sure that it's seated and you wanna make sure that it's properly inserted and you're putting a little bit of pressure on it to keep it straight so it's in the right spacing and the right position. I like to hold my finger back here on it so just to kinda hold it and put pressure on it so it doesn't wiggle around on me. So I'm gonna cut a number two and a number three. So let's do the number two. I'm just gonna do it, move it off camera for a second. You can see me cutting it. Let me see if I can. All right, so just kind of cutting it a few times. Go around it just to make sure we got all the nibbling off each little piece in there. Kind of cleaning it up. So that's number two, right? Let me take it out. You can see two. So then the space two is a four. Let me just kind of see if I can. I see a little. I mean, you can see it, but there's a little space in there that a little piece of brass that I can cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the third space, the um, yeah, number three space, again, using the same, same one. Just kind of cleaning it up, making sure that I uh, got everything in that little groove. So now, three, four, four, all right? So now I'm gonna use the number seven for the last two. Same thing. Same thing. I'm gonna slide it in. Just kind of see that. So four and five are gonna be a seven and a seven, right? This code. So I'm just gonna cut those down. Now you're gonna have a lot of that extra material. Um, might be kind of hard, more diff, kind of difficult to cut. So you could either just you know, be really strong. Press down really hard just to try to get the whole, the whole thing, or you can cut it off little pieces at a time. Just kind of you know, make sure clean it up, make sure I'm getting all the little pieces out. Okay, so that's four. I'm move on to the last one to the space five. So it looks like it's cut. Cool thing about this too is um, if you're a locksmith, you're familiar with when you cut keys, it leaves uh, little brass shavings everywhere. And you might have to file it down a little bit, but let's see, let's try it. So let's get our lock. And just to prove to you, I'm gonna put a key blank in. Right, just to show you it doesn't turn. No tricks up my sleeve. Take the key we just cut in, and it turns. That's the way it works. It's a little tiny rough. I could probably file it down. Um, some a good tip is if the key is kind of a little bit rough, a little sandy, uh, keep sanding it down just a little bit because you may want to just. It's better to cut it slightly too deep, or or slightly deeper than the actual cut, so that way it turns easier. Um, at least for quick set, but Schlage, Schlage has less tolerances, so might be a good idea just to kind of, just, you don't even, when you file it, just barely file it, um, just barely, just enough, but this will get you through in a pinch, right, so if you're locked out of your place, you decode the lock and you need the key, like, right there and then, pick yourself up some of these leashy cutters, 
pick yourself up some of these, uh, you know, these uh, guide key guides, and they make these in Quick Set, Schlag, Master Key. You know, if you have a master padlock, you can cut your own key after decoding it. Um, I can get into that in another video, showing you guys how to decode padlocks if you're missing keys, because I know a bunch of guys that used to have, well, until I helped them, um, they had piles of locks, master locks that didn't have keys. But this is a pretty cool alternative if you're out in the field, or if you're not a locksmith and you need to somehow, you know, get your own key, a lost key, create a lost key. That's how you do it. Thanks for watching. Um, and if you can, in the comment section, I'd like to know if you have Quick Set or if you have Schlage, you know, in your home. Which one do you use more? And is you know, do you know about those locks? Do you like one over the other? Let us know. You know let me know in the comments, and I'll catch you guys later.